Hi folks, thank you for joining. Today I'm going to talk to you about resume best practices. I had an opportunity to present to a group of students, new recent graduates and professionals at the career prep workshop at Reading Room Calicut today. A little bit about me. Hi, I'm Jim Manikam, a mentor, author, and an explorer, and a product marketing influencer. Over the past couple of years, I had three core values, inspire, influence, and impact. This has helped me design who I want to be and how I would think about my team. Inspire is all about trust and credibility, influence about extreme ownership, and impact is all about results and relationships. As part of the journey, I have explored a path towards stress and anxiety, mindfulness, essentialism, and diversity and belonging. And as part of that journey, I've self-published two books to share my experience with you all. Through my 10 years of career, I think there were three principles that stayed core to who I am. The first is continuous learning. With my opportunity to study my bachelor's in technology, my master's, as well as my MBA in marketing. But my learning didn't stop there. I'm a lifelong learner. For, um, as a, and a student. Winning together has been a key principle when I look at my teams, look at everything that I do in our corporations from big Fortune 500 companies to startups. And the third is community. It has always grounded me. It has helped me find answers that I didn't really know much about. And I'm grateful to be able to give back to the community in Calicut with the reading room as well. Through my career, I've had an opportunity to be part of product marketing teams, looking at messaging positioning, product launches, understanding our target audience, and then thinking about competitive intelligence. And through this experience, I also had a chance to look at leadership roles, leading teams of 25 in 10 plus countries at Lenovo, and growing a team at Del Bumi from four to 12 in 18 months. So let's actually dive in and talk about resume and CV best practices. The first is, what is the difference between CV versus resume? I thought there wasn't any difference, but until I recently realized, a CV in Latin stands for course for life. It's in contrast to a resume in French means summary. So both are tailored to help you find that specific job or company that you're applying for. And it's to position you as the best candidate. But a resume is a brief summary of your skills, your experience, and it, it's about maybe one to two pages. And a CV is much more detailed. It goes definitely beyond that. There are five key elements to include. The first is your contact. Keep it to the minimum information that's necessary. Your name, location, email address, and phone number. Include a summary, and we'll talk about summary versus objective in a few seconds. Include your relevant experience, your education, and your skills. That's what a resume is. It's an overview of your qualifications, your experience, skills, and education, and accomplishments. There are three kinds of resumes. The first is called chronological. All it means is it lists in history order uh, from the most recent to the uh, oldest one. When you think about functional or skill-based, this is where you're including information about things that you have done where it talks about your skills and your strengths. And then you have combination, which is not used as much. So I would say chronological is probably the most effective and most used today. These are the three formats and depending on where you are in your career, you can look at these three formats accordingly. Now, if you are a fresher and you're trying to figure out, I don't really have much work experience, how do I make sure I have the most effective resume to put out there? Start with that objective, that summary, if you will. Create and look at your educational achievements, right? your coursework that you have done, any related projects that you may have, and then look at volunteer experiences and internships and include those relevant wins. Mostly, freshers will have a, a functional resume format. And then if you're thinking about that professional resume, a few tips. Keep it simple. Don't try to include too many fonts. Uh, I did try that once. Uh, it sounded very cool, but it does not really help. So keep it simple. 
be consistent with your formatting keep it focused right your resume is not a list of everything you have done it's supposed to tell you a few things and why they should hire you have a visual design so think about how you want your resume to look and then make sure you're reviewing and editing your resume just because you have spent so much time on it you might miss out a few things and we'll talk about some of the worst mistakes you can make there's a website called jobscan.co which i have found beneficial for my teams and for my mentees we get a chance to review the resume to the job description and it goes through an ats system so ats stands for an application tracking system this is where all your resumes go before it gets picked up by that hiring manager so what are those 10 worst resume mistakes you can make typos grammatical errors there's nothing more putting off than finding a resume where someone's not taken the time to make sure the resume is representing you well if there aren't much examples if it sounds very generic and looks like you only know what the job duty is but not necessarily what you did trying to have that one size fits all not really effective thinking about your duties versus accomplishments so we'll talk about how you can translate that if there is no clear summary what you're looking for where you are uh, what your vision is and if there are no action words and i'll tell you what action words are in a second so action words are if in your resume you have used the words that are on the left hand side in charge of hard worker go getter think about action words instead use words like directed accomplished achieved it makes it more actionable and it gives the person reading a better sense of what you can and cannot do and so zeti.com has a lot of power words you can use it gives you a lot of examples so definitely leverage that and then visual design we talked about right uh, if your resume is somewhere um like the one that's on the left where we want to get to is think about your resume that's on the right clean simple um communicates all your experiences your years communicates your skills there are different things you can include on a resume don't try to format it accordingly for just for that and then here's what john wooden said he's a coach a baseball coach and his story is do not let what you cannot do interfere with what you can measure yourself by what not by what you have but by what you could accomplish with your ability never short sell yourself is exactly the point and we'll talk about our three objectives right the summary versus objective if your objective is very generic it doesn't really serve the purpose where you want to get to is have a strong summary tell why you want this job what your skills are what your current roles are maybe your experiences are how you can help the employer so here's an example of how to think of it when you're writing your resume summary look at the color codes right you can focus on the adjectives how do you talk about yourself you're self motivated you share your current responsibility the job you are doing today you can share your experience you can tell what your key achievements are how you can actually help this employer and then include the company name so it's more personalized you want your resumes to be tailored accordingly don't just have one size fits all and then have a clean format right nothing is uh, it's for the person that's looking at it they have maybe 30 seconds so you want to make sure you're communicating your message right away and that's what the format on the right looks like here are some tips at least have those one inch margins don't try to cut short that it makes uh, reading a lot more easier white space matters think about your font right 11 or 12 point i would say think about your header think about the sections that you have use bullet points to outline them and there are lots of other tips right your single spacing versus uh, cramming everything into a section adding extra space if you can making it more presentable and you don't need to include photos in your resume third is metrics versus results right uh, whenever you get a chance include your measurable achievements that's important it's easy for us to think that oh i don't really have done much take the job responsibility and convert it into a resume metric and then always include your lists your firsts in your career it always shows that you are a go getter and that you're a self starter in some way and here are some examples right instead of saying i spearheaded which was my responsibility i have actually talked about the result where i was able to turn around a poorly performing district and actually get those uh, value sales from that conversion 
So we talked a lot about resumes, the three uh, key areas to focus on. Next, I'm going to tell you a little bit about LinkedIn um, after we go through the, the four areas for growth. That's what you're looking for, right? The metric and the result. Reduction, if I can actually help cost reduction, maybe. And then it's about impact. It changes the dynamics if you can say, hey, I actually helped in driving social media campaign that led to growing maybe 200,000 users. That's more impactful than just saying, oh, I had a multi-channel multi social media campaign. So now let's talk about LinkedIn. And I'll use mine as an example. Make sure you have updated all these sections, your summary, your featured, your about section. It tells a lot about the person, your experience section. And then personalize your LinkedIn URL as well. Also look at your skills, education, and if you can get recommendations, that's always helpful. Last piece, you cannot go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. This is a quote by C.S. Lewis that I'm a big believer of. And then last piece, Books have definitely changed my life. Here are 21 books that has had an impact. And if you have a chance to be a part of a community, if you have a chance to be part of a public library out there, leverage it because it will definitely change your life. Thank you so much for listening today. And we look forward to seeing you in our next event at the Reading Room. Reading Room is a volunteer-run community library in uh, Calicut and you have an opportunity to be part of this community, so definitely stay connected. Reach out to us. We would love to hear from you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.